How's it going, everyone? So it's now been about a week since the general election, and I know I am a bit late on this, but I I was meaning to do this video, and I haven't really got the chance. Uh, so it's good to be doing it now. Going to be going through the election, my thoughts, my analysis, what happens from here on out. Um, you know, politically, obviously we've got a new government. Um, and also how well I did with my predictions, because I think that's quite interesting. And I actually did very well, so stick around for that if you want, or don't. You might have seen the last video anyway, so yeah. Anyway, so first of all, you know, it was a nice sunny day. Is exactly what I wanted. Went to the polling station, got my snacks, got home. The exit poll, I always knew the moment seeing it, it was going to be like, oh, fucking hell. And it, and it really was because you've seen all these polls and it wasn't quite as bad for the Tories as some of the polls had. We'll get into that in a minute. But it was crazy seeing it borne out in actual reality, the worst result like ever for the Tories. The exit poll came in and I think the biggest thing that stuck out was actually two things. Um, obviously, the obvious is, is the Labour and the Tory numbers. But the SNP and reform figures, which were the most uncertain and the SNP figures actually turned out to be pretty much bang on. Um, but the reform figures, I think the idea of having 13 reform MPs and having the Tories still get over 100, like in my brain, you couldn't really have one or the other because 13 reform MPs would require them getting very close to the Tory vote share, which would, you know, gut the Tories in so many more seats and probably would make them third place. So... In in the end, the poll did turn out to overestimate the reform vote and overestimate the conservative vote slightly. Um, but generally, as I thought, I was like predicting the election. I was kind of thinking, well, there's going to be a bit of a shy Tory vote and the super majority tax, tax, tax stuff that Sunak was putting out may have an effect but then I kind of thought, well, people are going to be voting tactically and people do despise this government. So, and nothing can cater around that. So it was kind of like a double-edged sword. But in the end, as I said, my predictions were relatively correct. And that is what got borne out. The Tories collapsed. Labour didn't do amazing, but they did all right. And there was a lot of tactical voting. So we'll get into that. Um in the first results we got in the Red Wall, actually, um, a lot of the seats where, you know, Labour held in 2019. Interesting, it was seen Labour's vote was not going up much. And reform in some places were actually getting second place um, in the Red Wall, which made sense. But it is kind of, you know, a bit worrying when you think about it. You know, the the narrative is Labour have, have won these places back after 2019. But they haven't really. It's what happened was reform split the vote there. Now, we can talk in a minute about whether reform and the Tories merging could have saved this election because, spoiler alert, it would have not helped them. Like, reform voters would have stayed at home. But I think it is somewhat concerning. And I think the other thing we saw was Greens going up, turnout dropping, and we gradually got to see the tactical voting play out as well. Um, after that, George Galloway lost his seat. Uh, which actually, you know, w was not actually that bad because uh, as much as it was funny seeing him win the by-election and the Tories and Labour getting pissed off over it, like, he is a twat and a grifter, so I don't really care. The other thing that was surprising was the amount of left-wing independents that were actually doing well. Um, Jonathan Ashworth lost his seat, uh, which was unexpected but pleasant surprise. And... Like, Leanne Mohammed almost beat Wes Streeting. I did not see that come in. God, it would have been so funny if she did. But, you know, you can't ask for everything. Pfizer Shaheen basically got second place in Chingford and Woodford Green. And really, it kind of just spells out to Labour. Fuck around, find out. You know, you could have easily won this seat. But you didn't because he kicked her out. And she had far greater appeal than the Labour candidate, clearly. Because as an independent, they got the same amount. We then had the Starmer Declaration of him clearly being very confident that he'd won the election. It's funny, Andrew Feinstein, who literally ran on a platform of fuck Keir Starmer, by the way, I'm left-wing, won like 20% of the vote, and Starmer's majority was slashed from 2019. Um, obviously, I didn't expect him to win at all, but he he got a very respectable vote um, and second place, and I can't really, you know, knock him for that. 
I think next time there's a genuine chance he does get unseated. But of course, the main story of the night was the Tories um, getting completely destroyed. And so many prominent Tory faces that we all know and love. That we all know. Um, Grant Shapps, Penny Mordaunt, Jonathan Gullis, Steve Baker, Johnny Mercer, Therese Coffey, Michael Fabricator, or whatever his name is, the guy who looks like Donald Trump. And of course, Jacob Rees-Mogg. There were a few bad guys that did survive. Like, um, I mean, well, there's 121 of them. But the the main ones are probably like Suella Braverman, Preeti Patel, uh, Kemi Badenoch. Um, the, the other one would obviously also be Lee Anderson, who defected to reform and held his seat in Ashfield. Reform did get five MPs in the end, which is only one more than what the Greens got. Because the Greens also had a fantastic night. They won Bristol Central off Labour. I and mean, they also won North Herefordshire and Waveney Valley uh, and held on to Brighton Pavilion easily. And the Lib Dems also had a great result picking up seats across the south of England, their best result ever, which is what I predicted. But of course, the moment us, all of us lefties were waiting for, and God, it was glorious, Corbyn winning his seat in Islington North. And it was, oh, it was so fucking funny. Uh... Just, just, just seeing Peter Mandelson on the BBC getting pissed off like that—that that made staying up the whole night worth it, to be honest. But it was actually a great election night for the left, a lot better than you know. It's probably as good as we could have asked for under these electoral circumstances. Farage also won his seat at the same time in Clacton, so he's in Parliament. But and to be honest, I don't really give a shit. It's just one more wanker in Parliament. There's plenty of them already. And then we had it, Rishi in Richmond. Funnily enough, actually held his seat very comfortably. It, there was a lot of debate on whether he'd lose it. I didn't think he would, um, but he actually held it very comfortably, as did Jeremy Hunt in his seat, and he was campaigning a lot there. But Rishi basically came out and conceded defeat, uh, and the Nico holding the sign behind him, like, there's there's been so many funny things to come out of this election, as there always are. I think the UK always succeeds at not taking itself too seriously on elections. And, like, we literally just kick the Prime Minister out. out. We just evict him within a day. i got to love that, like, just forcing them out in humiliation. As opposed to America, where they spend, like, literally two years on an election. And then two years on maybe governing the country. But, oh, wait, you got to wait for the midterms. Like... The system we have is so much better, even though it's also fucking terrible. And then we had probably the biggest Portillo moment of the night, um, which was Liz Truss losing her seat. And it was it was close and like it was so it was so funny. And I I could ju I could kind of feel like she is so unpopular. Surely people go into the polling station and they just see the name Liz Truss and they go, Ugh, it's like like, now nah, I'll, I'll just vote reform, I'll just spoil my ballot, or I'll vote for the bloody independent, because there was t 10 million people were standing there, and there was a risk that that could split the vote and allow trust to get in, but I think it had the opposite effect. The Labour candidate won with the lowest vote share of any candidate in this whole election. And to rub more salt in the wounds, Rishi was actually the only Tory Prime Minister um, of this whole period that actually kept his seat. Like, I think Margaret Thatcher's old seat was lost, uh, so was Whitney, David Cameron's seat. So was Theresa May's old seat in Maidenhead. Um, and obviously um, a Boris Johnson's seat in Uxbridge. And Liz Truss, of course. So it was a great election night um, for pretty much everyone apart from the SNP who did collapse in Scotland. I thought they were going to lose, but I didn't think they would lose that badly. But when you dig into the numbers, Labour didn't have as much of a landslide as you'd think. They won 34-35% of the vote, depending on whether you go by UK or Great Britain results. And they won like 63% of the seats. I think it is the most disproportionate election in UK history compared to votes to the result in Parliament. And they actually lost net votes on 2019. And if you look at the post-election polling, Labour actually lost a significant amount of their 2019 votes. But gained them back where they needed in Lib Dem tactical votes or Tory votes in some cases and obviously there was a reform and Tory split and that's another thing I want to talk about that what gave this election result what made it so bad for the Tories voter efficiency the Lib Dems only targeted places where they knew they would win Labour only targeted places where they knew they would win um we're apart from Islington North 
obviously. Labour lost a lot of their left-wing voters in places like London, even in Wales, to Plaid Cymru, and um, didn't really gain back any of the sort of working-class voters they lost in 2019. Those just went to reform, same as in the Red Wall. But they did gain swing voters in the places where they need it, and as I said, the Tory vote collapsed. Uh, but it is important to remember the combined Tory and reform vote is less than the total Conservative vote in 2019. And the combined Labour, Lib Dem, Nationalists like SNP, Plaid um, and Green vote is, I think it was close to 60%. So under proportional representation, you would still have a massive majority co coalition government, um, which is why I think we... After this election, we need proportional representation in some form. Uh, and so some people will say, oh, let's, you know, reform it. But as I just said, I'd rather have permanent left leaning governments um, where you can actually bring people that don't vote. There'll be way higher turnout. People will actually vote, you know, because every vote matters. And I think a lot of the people that don't vote are generally left leaning on a lot of issues. Because, you know, if you're far, if you're right wing and you're apathetic to what politics, you can vote reform. So if the price for having permanent left leaning governments in the UK is 80 reform MPs, then so be it, I say. And also it's for the sake of democracy as well. And then, of course, there's the other side of it, which is tactical voting was massive. So in areas, you know, where Labour were the main challenger to the Tories, Lib Dems voted Labour because there wasn't that ideological difference there was in 2019 between Labour and the Lib Dems. And likewise, um, it goes the other way, where Labour voters were happier to vote Lib Dem because Lib Dems had moved to the left and Labour had moved to the right. Now, a lot of people do say that um, the Tories, if, you know, Reform and the Tories had made a deal, they could have still won this election. No. Few reasons. The Tories were simply too unpopular to win this election. And, you know, they overperformed the polls. They got 24% in the end. It's like, oh, 24% of people voted Tory. That is low. Like, that's not high. People had seen so many polls of them, you know, being behind reform that they thought that, you know, oh, you know, it's only a 10-point lead for Labour. That's because Labour's not massively enthusiastic. The Tories have completely collapsed. And um, pretty much every party, as I said, apart from the SNP, did well. And we now live after this election in a five-party system in Great Britain. And I would also add that in the local elections, the results were pretty much the same in the projected national share of the vote. And uh, reform was not on the ballot. And yes, they were in a few councils, and they did, in some cases, beat the Tories for second place. But that those were places in the north of England where they beat the Tories for second place in this election anyway. And it shows that when people didn't have... Um, reform to vote for people that weren't going to vote Tory either stayed at home or voted for somebody else and yes I know local issues do play their part and local elections are not the same as general elections but I think this is a good example of it and people you know Labour underperformed the polls and people say oh you know it's because of tactical voting but really the two polls showed without tactical voting Labour's vote dropped further because people could vote Greens safely. And one of the other things I would say about this election safe seats are gone the electorate is so volatile but also um, you know people aren't as loyal to political parties as brands anymore if you're not offering what they want they will find it somewhere else and we've seen that with all the independents getting elected in let safe labor seats we've seen it in the places where the greens have overturned massive majorities we've seen it in all the tories losing their seats and the lib dems um and labor winning we've seen it in all the upsets reform have caused and we've seen it in scotland within a decade the smp went from nowhere to dominating to back to square one so it will be interesting to see what happens in the weeks and months ahead uh we're now into a starmer government which will be better than the tories but they're not going to go far enough on key issues um which you know could open up more of a vacuum for the greens i think they came second in like 50 seats so you know they could do better um labor could go down likewise labor could actually impress people and go up after this election and this to, as to quote an old simpsons meme this is the worst election of your party's history so far. Like, it could get worse for the Tories, especially if their old voter base, which is all they have now, if they die. It's like, you, I, you could be out of power forever now. This could only be the beginning, no matter who they elect as their new leader. 
and it doesn't look like they've got any an amazing set of choices, uh, does it? But we'll see what happens. Uh, and now I'm going to get down to my predictions and what I got right. So I predicted the Tories would get their worst result in history. They actually did. Uh, possibly less than 100 seats. And I was questioning that because I didn't think they would. But I was put in there just in case and they didn't get it. Labour wins majority bigger than 1997. Wrong. With less votes than in 2017. Double right. They actually got less votes than 2019. Corbyn holds his seat in Islington North. Yes, turnout drop of at least 4 percentage points. It's actually a turnout drop of 7.5%. Lowest combined vote share for the Labour and the Tories since World War II, and that was correct. It was only 58%, which is lower than 2010 when Nick Clegg led the Lib Dems. At least one high-profile Labour MP loses their seat. We got quite a few, actually. Highest ever seat total for the Lib Dems, despite losing votes on 2019, and they did, um, but there was a lower turnout. Their vote share was slightly up by about half a percentage. Best ever result for the Greens. This was an obvious one, but I wanted to put it down. And yes, uh, they did get a very good result. Reform get under 10 seats. This was right and contrary to the exit poll. Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak lose their seat. Uh, and obviously half of that was right. Rishi Sunak, I had a feeling he would hang on because he's not personally unpopular enough to lose his seat, I don't think. Like, I really did not think he would be. SNP remain the largest party in Scotland. This was the one I actually got wrong. Uh, Sinn Féin become the largest party in Northern Ireland, which, uh, yeah, that did happen. Worst Tory vote share in Wales for 100 years. I was just throwing a Wales prediction at the wall, but I guess this actually was true, even though Labour went down there as well. They got, Tories got no seats in Wales. And now let's go to the vote and seat predictions and see how well I did. So I predicted Labour would get 38% of the vote in Great Britain. They got 35%. I predicted the Conservatives would get 22%. They got 24%. Predicted reform would get 15%. That was actually right. Lib Dems predicted 11%. They got 13 Greens, 8%. They got 7%. SNP predicted 3%. They got 2.5%. And the others, I predicted 3%. And they got 4%. And the turnout, I predicted 62%. And they actually got 60%. And now for the seats, I predicted Labour would get 427, they got 410. Predicted the Conservatives would get 99, they got 121. Lib Dems, I predicted they get 65, they got 72. SNP, I predicted they get 25, they got 9, so I still predicted a loss. Reform UK, I predicted they get 5 seats, and they did actually get 5. Greens predicted 4, they got 4. Plaid Cymru, 3, they got 4, they actually had a pretty good result. Others, I predicted four, and they got seven. And that includes the speaker, to be fair. Sinn Féin predicted eight, they got seven. DUP predicted six, they got five. Socialist Democratic and Labour Party, two, two. Alliance Party, Northern Ireland, predicted two, they got one. And the Ulster Unionist Party and the traditional Unionist Voice both got one seat each, and I actually didn't have them on my radar, so I put my hands up. For that one so overall actually a pretty good election for my predictions uh and a good outcome the tories have finally been booted out of government it's good that yes we can have criticisms of the labor party but we can now focus on what we do want as opposed to not what we don't want and it's gonna be interesting to see what happens in the polls over the next few months as well uh, so far, we've had some all right stuff on housing the government has done, but also, uh, oh, yeah, we're just going to basically let the private sector do whatever the fuck they want uh, and not, you know, invest in any affordable council housing because the market's going to do it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but at least they've, I mean, at least it's a fucking start building something. So uh, I hope you enjoyed. I know I'm very late on this, um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. I uh, don't know when I'll do another video, but I don't know, maybe at some point in the future, I'll probably just do, you know, whatever I shit I feel like talking about on whatever day, if I can be asked to uh, record and if I've got enough memory and I can be asked to sort it all out. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video, whenever it is. Goodbye.